Well, good morning, and today we are inside rather than outside uh, because it's a bit colder, it's still very early, it's dark, the birds are chirping, and we can just glorify God for a new day and for a new morning and for a new message for something that the Lord's put in my heart. I think something that we need to get very honest about today as we talk about fear because I think all of us, especially in these times, we face different things. And uh, I'll never forget when I just became a Christian, I used to think that God was going to make everything easy for me. And then I was dismally surprised when things didn't always work out as I thought they would work out. And I had to face certain things. And I think through my, throughout my life, I have faced some difficulties where um, I was really in a painful emotional situation. And those painful situations uh, caused... Uh, Fear in those areas where you then tend to avoid those areas. And I did a study on the word fear. Um, you know, there's, there is different uh, opinions about this, but on average, uh, fear not is mentioned uh, almost daily, 365 times in the Bible, some translations more than others. But on average, there is a fear not for almost every day of the year. And uh, when we think of fear not, a lot of us that suffer from anxiety, a, lo a lot of us that suffer from, from fear, we, we feel guilty. We feel that um, we're not good Christians. We look at other people and we look at their lives and we think, but why are they so stable? Why are they such good Christians? But we don't understand actually what the word fear means because most people hide their fear. Most people, uh, you know, they, they don't show it. They don't speak about it. And they, they are thinking about things. They are sitting with situations and difficulties, but they are hiding those fears. And uh, I was doing a study on the word fear, and the Greek word fear is phobos. And this initially had the meaning of flight. So it, it, was, it was not talking about the emotion of fear as such. Uh, it, it's not talking about feeling feelings of, of possible anxiety. It's talking about flight. It's actually talking about running away. Um, it, it actually says fear can be defined as that which is, is caused by the intimidation of an adversary. So if you are feeling intimidated, if you are looking at your life and you're looking at situations and you're saying to yourself that there's a lot of things in my life that I'm intimidated by, I'm worried, I'm concerned the fact is, when the Bible says, fear not, it doesn't say, don't tremble. It, it doesn't say, don't be afraid in the sense where there is potential danger or you have to face some pain. It's actually saying, don't run away. Don't run away. Don't stand your ground. Uh, it, it says, when you've put on the armor of God, then stand your ground. And as Christians, we have to stand our ground. And I want to encourage you today that's watching because I know that many of us hide this. We don't talk about it. Uh, it it's not something that uh, it's, it's discussed maybe even from the pulpit where pastors say, you know what, I've, I, I'm worried about this. I'm concerned about this, this problem, that problem. We try and be super spiritual and we try and put this image forward by telling people, oh, everything's great and bless God and all of that. But a lot of times, a lot of people are sitting and they're sitting with tremendous feelings of guilt because of fear. They think, you know, um, th 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 they feel guilty. They, they feel anxious and, and they feel guilty because they're anxious. And they think, I shouldn't feel like this. I shouldn't worry about uh, paying my bills. I shouldn't worry about uh, the problem with my children. I shouldn't worry about the problem with my health because I've got the promises of God. And I shouldn't worry about these things. But yet these things are, are coming and attacking my mind constantly. And there are areas in my life where I get very concerned, especially if I'm watching something online or I hear a report of potential problems, potential this. And um, there's such a lot of negativity going around that our mind is bombarded by this. But the Bible says, fear not. It doesn't mean that you are going to be free from the emotion. It doesn't mean that there, are, there won't be times when you are worried about things or that there, there, there's uh, great concerns in your life. Uh, an intimidation by the enemy because the enemy is trying to intimidate you every day. It doesn't mean that you won't feel that. It doesn't mean that you won't go through those things. But does it, what it does mean is that you need to build yourself up 
in courageousness. Uh, you know, fear not means to move forward when you're afraid. Even when you're afraid to still move forward, to still carry on, to still pray, to still read your Bible and, and to just press in, even if you're afraid, even if you fear uh, in, in the sense where you are thinking about things. Remember the definition of fear actually means flight. It, it, it doesn't mean sitting, the, the, the true word definition of fear does not mean sitting thinking about things. It doesn't mean having anxious thoughts because those things a lot of times we can't help them. We we are human. We're living in a human body and we can't help those thoughts coming to us. We can't help the problems that we're facing in the mental areas of our minds. We can't help those. And, and the Bible doesn't say when you fear in the sense when you're thinking about something and you're hearing a report or you're looking at your bank account or you're looking at the economy or you're looking at problems. The Bible doesn't say that you judged because you thought of something. It, it actually, when, if you go look at the original Greek here, it actually says, don't run, don't run, don't run away, stand your ground, because uh, your trust in God must be greater than, than the intimidation of the, of the problem. Uh, I, I, I looked at this word and, and, and the intimidation of the enemy, the uh, intimidation of, of the adversary, it's so profound because this is what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to intimidate us because we are looking in the natural world with limited sight. So we're looking at the physical world around us and we're seeing things and we're seeing with our eyes, but we cannot see what is in the spiritual. And um, it's, it's like the, the prophet said, open my servant's eyes because they were surrounded by the armies and the servant could not see it and the, the, the servant was crying out in fear and the prophet said, open his eyes so that he can see. And maybe that is what we need in our spiritual life. We're, to f Forget about maybe the sleepless nights that you've had, maybe the, you, the, the failures that you've had and maybe even the emotional hurts and the pains that you've had that's, that's boxed you in behind doors of fear where you are because of hurt, because of pain, you have a lot of things that you don't want to face and now those things have become your uh, Achilles heel where you can't move left, you can't move right because you've become a very complicated person because of your history. Maybe we should forget all of those things. Maybe, maybe we should forget to try and sort out those things and try and even, I mean, even without God, you can't even face those fears and you can't go through those doors to enter into the freedom. So you've become a person that is in bondage because that is what the devil's trying to do by intimidation. He's trying to put us in bondage. If you look at the worst types of fear where people can't even go out of their houses, they are in bondage. And the devil is trying to push us back in terms of our ground, in terms of our inheritance. Uh, there Canaan was lying in front of Israel and it was a vast land flowing with milk and honey. But there were giants in the land and the spies brought back negative report. Only two gave a positive report which sent Israel back into the desert for 40 years but year after the 40 years, Joshua was at the edge of the promised land, ready to enter in. And the Lord said to him, Moses, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them. So what I want to do is I want to say to you today to get ready to get into your promised land, not by your own power, not by your own might, not by your own strength, not by your own psychological analysis or sorting out your psychology, but by focusing in on God and focusing in on His promise and focusing in on what He says. It says, He says, yeah, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised to Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon, from the great river of Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. No one will be able to stand. It's not about you. It's not about your complexity. It's not about your idiosyncrasies or, or, or your phobias, your fears. It's about God and about God, what God will do through you. And he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That promise that the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. So even in your fear, even in when you feel you want to run, even when you feel you're anxious, he says, I will never leave you 
nor forsake you. And, he, and He's given us the Holy Spirit. He said to His disciples, I'm not leaving you as orphans. And there He says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to the inheritance that I swore your ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Courage is to face adversity without running. So we have to be courageous, even if we are facing adversity, even if every fiber in our body feels that we want to give up, even if every fiber in our body feels that we cannot do this. Courage is, is, the, is the essence that we can move forward, even in, in the process of adversity. And it's this standoff where the enemy is trying to push us back. He's trying to keep us on the other side of the, of the Jordan River so we cannot possess what God has for us. He's trying to show us the giants. And the spies that came back, they said, in our own eyes, we looked like grasshoppers. And even in their eyes, if you go read that initial account, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. And they also saw, thought that those people saw them as grasshoppers. And yet, if you go and read uh, the book of Joshua, you will see that the Bible says that the fear and the dread of Israel fell upon the Canaanites. So, in other words, they were wrong. The giants feared them and your demons and your giants are fearing you, but they don't want you to know that they are fearing you. They are standing with big muscles. They are trying to intimidate you. Remember the word intimidation. They are trying to intimidate you so they can get you into bondage. That is what they're trying to do. So you're looking at them. You're seeing these giants. You're seeing maybe a bank account that's a problem. Maybe a workplace that's a problem. Maybe a family member that's a problem. Maybe a health condition that's a problem. And you have to ask yourself the question, is anything too hard for the Lord? Because your confidence will not be in your history. It will not be in what you've done. It will not be in, in how well you can do it. It will not be in, in your theology or your intelligence uh, or your way of uh, reciting the promises or, or remembering the promises. It is in the finished work of the cross. There's a legal right for you and me to move forward into the promised land. And if we have to move afraid, we have to move afraid because once we start possessing the land, the fear will also subside. So fear, uh, unfortunately, is part of life. We, we cannot get away from it. When we hear things, when we see things, we will be affected by it. But the fact of the matter is we need to learn how to move forward even in the wake of fear, even when, when we are afraid I will never forget one day on the radio, I, I did Elliot's testimony of these missionaries who were murdered in, 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 in America. Uh, and uh, the, I, I was listening to the, the daughter and the wife of the missionary. And the wife was talking about when she had to go face this tribe. Now, this tribe was a dangerous tribe and they had killed her husband and, the, and, and, and his friends. And, the, and she, she actually went in there afraid. She went in there afraid and she faced them. Sometimes we have to walk straight into our fear so that we can overcome that fear and break that intimidation. Uh, the words in the spirit that I'm, that I'm hearing a lot this morning is intimidation and bondage. These two are connected because if the enemy can intimidate you, if he can make you shrink back, I mean, just think of the Spirit. If, if the Lord had to open your eyes today and you had to see yourself as a son of God with the authority that Christ gave you when He said it is done, that authority bestowed upon you as you received Christ and the Holy Spirit came to reside in you. Now you, you've become God's mouthpiece on earth where you declare things uh, into being and you have to stand and declare it, even in your city, in your suburb, in your family, wherever you are, you are the light, you are the salt, you are supposed to declare those things. But the enemy is trying to intimidate you, and maybe he's, he's, he's got areas of bondage where you've been hurt, terribly hurt, and those areas of bondage are keeping you back so that you cannot fulfill your heavenly mandate on earth. And I want to encourage you today to move forward even when you're afraid. The Bible say, doesn't say don't tremble. It doesn't say don't think of things or, uh, you know, we are instructed to think of the heavenly things. 
But it doesn't say that you will never have those emotions. You will never have those feelings. But it says, don't fear. And in essence, looking at the original text, like I started off the Greek Phobos, it actually means don't run. Don't run. Stand your ground. Move forward even when afraid and you will be victorious because God has given you the authority. God has given you the power. God has given you the anointing to move forward in Jesus name. So I want to encourage you today. I don't know what you're going through. I don't maybe even know you as you're watching this. But let me tell you, Christ knows you because he says that I know you so well that even the head, uh, your hairs on your head are numbered. That scripture blowed my mind. You know, it just blows my mind every time I read it because I'm thinking, how can God that created the universe, 50 billion galaxy, know how many hairs is on my head? One of 8 billion people on the planet. It, it just shows the magnitude and the power of God. So you don't have anything to worry about because you serve a great and an awesome God. And I want to end off with a scripture that, I, that really blessed me. And, I, and I'm reading this from the, from the Amplified Bible because it really blessed my heart. And I know after serving the Lord for 29 years, I know that there are things that we face as Christians that are difficult. Things that we don't even want to mention to people. Uh, things that we will never talk in church about because we will feel too condemned to say, you know what, I'm fearing, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. And like I say, we misunderstand fear. We, we, we think that the Bible says that we will get to a position where our surroundings will never affect us. No, but our, our spiritual eyes must be opened so that we can constantly see into the spiritual dimension because then we can see the magnitude of God and then it will minimize our situations that we are facing in this life and in this world. So the things that you are facing now are minuscule. They're small compared to the greatness of our God. And that is what you need to understand. And that is what you need to believe today. As you hear this message, make it your own and say, Lord, I, I know I fear. I know that I'm afraid, but I'm going to move forward with the authority and the power that, the, that Jesus has given for me. I'm going to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit, that same power that created the entire universe is living within me and within you. What more do we need? We need nothing more. All we need to do is we need to be able to actually move forward even when we are afraid. So Psalm 34 verse 19 says, many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confronts the righteous. So it doesn't say the righteous are free. It doesn't say the righteous have a get out of jail free card. It doesn't say that the righteous will never face things. No, it says many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. But here's the promise that I want you to store in your heart, in your mind, and just hold on to this, even in the most difficult circumstances. But the Lord rescues him from them all. God is going to rescue you from them all. Do not be sad, Jesus said to his disciples. Do not be sad because I'm going to prepare a place for you. If we can have one glimpse of heaven today, it will make earth look much dimmer because we will think of our hope. We will think of what God is preparing for us, for those that love him. So we, we might have Temporary problems and temporary things to face on earth. But they do not compare with the glory that we are going to experience in eternity. And we are all looking forward to that. But while we are here, we will push forward and we will push back the darkness. We will move forward with courage in the power of God. And we will possess what God has for us. We will not allow the enemy to intimidate us into bondage. Listen again. We are not going to allow the enemy to intimidate us into bondage, but we are going to face and confront our fears and we are going to walk through those fears into the dimension of faith. And even if we have unbelief that rises up, we are going to counter that unbelief by filling ourselves with God's word. So because faith cometh by hearing and by hearing 
uh, the Word of God. So we are going to put the Word of God on our ears, on our eyes. Uh, it says here to Joshua, do not let it depart from you day and night. And we are not going to let God's promises and what God has for us depart from us. But we are going to face the fear and we are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. God bless you and thanks for watching.